I had to check to see if this guy is legitimately a senator because I didn't believe it. But yeah, and behold, official Twitter account of U.S. Senator, proudly working for the people of Connecticut. So why is this astonishing? Well, it's due to what they post. If Justice Alito is willing to expound to the Wall Street Journal that Congress has no authority over the court, you should come before Congress to tell us directly why. In testimony before the Judiciary Committee, and while he's there, we can talk about ethical lapses in the Supreme Court of Conduct. Okay, so let me, as a Romanian, explain to this U.S. Senator how the American system functions. There is a separation of powers between the legislative, the executive branch, and the judiciary branch. As such, the legislative branch does not have authority over the judiciary branch. So why am I saying that this is a problem with the U.S. education system? Well, obviously he knows. I find it difficult to believe that he doesn't have experts and advisors even if he wouldn't know. And yet, despite the fact that he knows, he posts the nonsense. Why does he post the nonsense? He posts the nonsense because the people that he addresses are uneducated. And this is the problem. I knew about this since I was in fifth grade. Why did I know about this since I was in fifth grade? Because we had civic course at our school where we learned how the Romanian government operates. And I'm pretty sure that Americans should have the same, but I guess uh, there may not be enough time given the importance of the LGBT curriculum. I, I joke, of course, but still, like if you're going to learn that type of stuff in school, surely you must have time to learn a little bit about civics. And I'll tell you why the separation of power is important. If you look at the Soviet Union, which is a place that, you know, America went to a Cold War with and they disagreed upon the Soviet Union way of life. They called it totalitarian while the Americans were priding themselves of having freedom. And one of the main reasons for it wasn't the American Constitution, by the way. Because the Soviets also had a constitution which uh, in some points was even more liberal than the Americans, believe it or not. They, of course, allowed people the right to protest. Uh, they, they said that uh, minorities are to be respected, so on and so forth. The main difference between the Soviet Union and the United States was that in the Soviet Union, power was centralized. They didn't have a separation between the judiciary, the legislative, and the executive branch. Meanwhile, the United States did. So when power is centralized, it means that no one answers to anyone. It means that, well, the judges, which are under the influence of the party, don't have a reason, or actually are very desensitized, in order to look into the politicians' business. They can even be weaponized to be used against other politicians. This is why in my country we have the accusations of corruption when a politician is trying to tell a judge what to do. The judges are supposed to be independent. In fact, the judges are the ones that are supposed to keep the senators in check. Whenever the senator passes a legislation that's unconstitutional, that's where the Supreme Court comes and they overrule what the senators can do. And I'm pretty sure that the left knows about this. I mean, up until the point they had left-leaning judges on the court, they were fine with this. But now that a couple of decisions that the right-wing judges on the Supreme Court have given, that they're willing to try and destroy the concept of the separation between uh, the powers. I mean, stacking the court is one of the things that uh, was discussed. Luckily, they didn't do it. Uh, however, it is very dangerous that most Americans do not even understand the importance of this. Like, how can you even vote? How can you even have an opinion on how your nation is run if you don't understand, like, the very basics, fundamentals? And again, like, the, the fact that... Um, Justice Alito told to the Wall Street Journal that Congress has no authority over the court. This is absolutely factually correct. Congress does not have authority over the Supreme Court. Again, like the separation of power. The Wall Street Journal knows it, but they're using it as propaganda against the people who don't know it to try to make it appear that the justices have gone rogue. That these are evil justices that have nominated by Donald Trump and uh, now they're doing whatever they want to. Which is definitely not the case. It's also interesting that this is the most uh, diverse court in the history of the United States. I mean, 
the Supreme Justice is black. Uh, they have, I believe, two women, right? And the, over there, I think, like, um, Biden nominated a woman of color as well. The most diverse court in the history of the United States, and yet, for some reason, the left doesn't really appreciate it. Funny how that is, you know, like, uh, it, it does go to show that they don't really care about diversity. They care about ideology, which is why they're launching this uh, very negative PR campaign against the Supreme Court of the United States. And uh, if you happen to be an American, you need to defend it. Now you know the arguments. Now now you know why it's important to defend it. Um, because uh, the, if you don't have a separation, and let's say that you could actually summon the, the justices from the Supreme Court to the Senate and uh, ask the questions and force them to be under oath and uh, give their response to the senators, well, then it means that the senators would be able to control the justices. It means that whomever is in power could weaponize the judicial system against the opposition. I mean, that, that is what a dictatorship does. That's what a tin horn Republican does. Like that, That's why we're criticizing these things and we're calling it a banana republic and whatever. But again, like I, I'm genuinely curious like how many people are unaware of this if you have like a, a Democrat senator that again, like his interest is not to educate the public. He's not going to educate. He's in, instead going to pretend that he is dumb and he is going to pose this again in the hopes that the people that support him are going to see this post and they're going to say, wow, like those justices, they, they now don't listen to the senators. Fortunately, of course, on Twitter, you do have like uh, free speech and uh, people are saying that this person has stolen valor and whatnot. Like, I don't know if it's true, but uh, you, you do have individuals that are saying stop interfering with the courts. Your role is uh, advice and consent. No justice owes you a testimony to explain this. So as you can see, fortunately, in the comment section, most people are calling him out. But unfortunately, most people are right wingers. I'm curious like what left-leading people think because those are the ones that voted for him and uh, maybe they, they don't want to partake in the conversation because uh, they, they happen to know but like they're pretending to be dumb or they just uh, genuinely don't know. But again, the main problem is with the American education system. Like it must be so broken to the point where people are very aware about uh, gender theory and other uh, things that don't really help you navigate society or find a job, but they don't know the important things which are required for every person that uh, wants to have a vote to know. Anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think, and as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.